What's going on with you guys? You know who it is. It's your boy, John Mike. And today we're going to be digging into the Personas Atom controller. Uh, it's a pretty dope controller. If you haven't seen my little initial uh, impressions video of it when I pulled it out the box and all of that good stuff and who's this for kind of type thing, uh, check that up in the title, you know, little card thing that pops up or in the description, I'll put it down there as well. So you can watch that, then come back over and check this video out if you're still interested uh, in checking this thing out and going deeper into it. So uh, let's talk about this thing. It's it's really, really dope. This is basically Personas' answer to the whole world of beat making, uh, you know, like your push uh, controller uh, that Ableton uses in the machine by Native Instruments and MPC, their whole world of software. And Persona said, hmm, we want to get, we want a piece of that action. We want to so, show people that Persona, the Studio One is capable of appealing to the beat making market uh, and what they do. So we want to get them in there uh, and these producers using our software and our controllers. So let's see if this thing really kind of, you know, holds up. And I'm going to show you how this thing works and one of the things i will say and i, I kind of said it in my other video in case you you don't go watch it uh but uh if you're coming from like a npc world a machine world you you're you're you've been using all types of different other uh beat machines or beat you know making controllers uh then getting used to this is going to be a little bit of a adjustment at first because things are kind of you know positioned differently than what most beat makers or most people are used to. Uh, so you kind of got to get used to that. So let's overview where everything is and how this kind of works. So you, know, you got your navigation area over here on this side. So if I, let me hit my setup button, hit browse and bring it up. So I can actually dig through my browser area and select through my presets here in this area. If I have a folder of something and I want to close it, I can hit the left button. If I want to open that folder up, I can hit the right button. Uh, you know, once I find something that I like, I can hit the select button and it actually opens it up. You know what I'm saying? So I've opened up that impact with that, but you can use it to open up any other of your softwares inside of your plugins inside of Studio One or your third party stuff or whatever. Whatever shows up in the browser, you can access it from the Atom just like that and play it uh, on the pads. Now, moving forward, there is the transport area right here, which is like your click on and off, your record, you know, your stop and play, all of that good stuff like that. Uh, and if you shift, you can get other options like count, count in, uh, you can hold shift and hit record and it'll save. You got your loop right here. And then where it was hiding, it, it took me a second to find it. The undo button is actually the stop button. So if you screw something up, you want to undo, hit shift and stop and it will undo. It took me a minute to find that. I was about to like almost curse personas out. I don't curse, but I thought about, I had some words swimming around in my head that did not come out of my mouth. But I was literally like, man, where's the undo? I can't just simply undo. And I found out it was on the stop. So uh, that's where it is. That helped me. It may help you. <laughs> All right. So uh, moving along in this area over here, you have your song area where you got song controls. So if I hit setup, and you're going to be coming in and out of this menu a whole lot. Uh, when using this controller, your setup is pretty much where everything uh, is or what have you. So in the setup mode, you have access to your browser. You know, I can bring that over here. I got tap tempo, two, three, four, you know, and I can tap that in there. Uh, I have duplicate and delete, which I'll show you. I'll come back to that and show you that. Uh, and then you have these little macro or assignable areas down here where you can make it do things. So by default, I'm going to bring this up on the screen here. This is kind of there and this is clicking that little down arrow in case you missed it and hitting Adam. Um, this is kind of their default mapping, so to speak, of how this is, you know, how they have it set up or whatever. But you can reassign this by right clicking and hitting assign and assign it to any, any of these buttons. These uh, these pads down here can be assigned to any of the functions inside of Studio One. You can type them in. Uh, and, and find that control or command that you wanted to uh, activate and assign it to these particular pads down here. All right. So um, you got pattern. Like, for instance, if I wanted to insert a pattern, I can just hit uh, that button right there. 
uh, and you can see it brought a little pattern up right here um, to use or whatever. If I wanted to, let me move this out of the way. Uh, if I wanted to duplicate that pattern, I can just hit the duplicate button right here. If I wanted to delete that, I can hit delete. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so you're in complete control here. Now, these uh, these buttons right here, the, the or the knobs rather, have uh, different functions depending on what mode you're in. So right here, if I'm in the browser area, uh, I can actually use this knob right here. If I open, bring my browser up, I can use this knob to actually go through all of my presets that I have here quickly, more quickly than doing the up and down button. I can just grab this knob and just like quickly fly through that. One thing I found is that it's hard sometimes to, it's not as, uh, you know, like see how I'm, like I'm trying to like stop on that impact. So it's not as, it's not really intuitive like that. Sometimes you'll pass by it, you know, trying to get to something, but it's, it's, it's a good way of quickly, quickly, <clears throat> kind of digging through there or whatever. So also this second knob right over tempo actually controls your tempo. So you can make it faster or slower, uh, you know, adjust that right there uh, and, or use tap tempo. So that's pretty much the setup area. Now you have a set loop button here that allows you to set your loop points uh, and things like that. Uh, moving on down, this is your event area where you have an editor. You can control the edit uh, window, bringing it back and forth if I hit shift. And edit, I can uh, actually remove the editor. So if I want to open it, I hit it. If I want to close it, I hit shift and hit it again, and it closes. Uh, then there's quantize and nudge button right here where you can actually quantize uh, a pattern if you create it. Uh, and then you have your instrument show and hide just by pressing that button. Really, really useful. Um, and then this preset button is pretty cool. Uh, when you have your instrument pulled up, you can hold down the preset button and then I can actually cycle through my different presets. Close my editor here. So I can cycle through my presets just by holding down that uh, bank button. I can hold that down and now I can jump through my different banks here inside of impact, which is pretty cool. Uh, full level. Uh, if I would by default, you know, these pads are velocity sensitive. So the harder you hit them, the louder they play, softer they play, what have you. But you can turn on full level and it will play these samples now at their full 127 velocity level. You see what I'm saying? Now, what's also dope, which I think is one of, to me, is my favorite feature of this controller is the note repeat. So if I hit like my hi-hat and I want to hit that um, and do some note repeats with that, uh, I can actually now use just these pads to do the different repeats. Now, I've played with a lot of controllers and I don't think I've played with one that actually had the note repeat laid out like this where you can do it this simple. I think that's pretty cool because other controllers, I, you have to hold down, note, repeat, hold the pad. And then if you got your little adjustment knob while you're holding the pad to kind of go between your 132nd and your 116th and get those little fast hi-hat things going on. So that's pretty cool that they actually got that set up to where you just hit that one button, hit the, you know, the thing that you want to repeat, hit that. You know, and you can just do it just like that. I think that's pretty cool. Then you have your shift button, which, of course, act activates all of your secondary options for the different thing, various uh, parts of it. Uh, now, the other thing, only other thing about this is the uh, when you have an instrument pulled up, these knobs actually now control the instrument. So if I want to control the the gain or the volume on a sound. I can do it using that first knob. If I want to control the panning, I can do that like that. And if I want to control um, the pitch, that's how I can do that. Uh, and then if I want to control my decay, that's what I'm going to use this knob for. So 
So that's pretty cool. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, how it kind of functions uh, inside of the software or whatever. That's pretty much how it, how, it, how, it, how it controls everything. There are other little sub things that you can do that we'll get into maybe in a more advanced uh, video, but that's kind of the way it does. So that's pretty much it. Let, let's, that's kind of my overview, quick overview of the features and functions of this uh, particular controller. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, as you can see, it, it takes a little bit, kind of a learning curve to get used to where everything is and what everything does. That's what I wanted to do with this video. I didn't want it to be hyper long, but I wanted it to uh, kind of show you guys, wanted to kind of show you guys what it can do and how to get around the different menus. I'm going to do another video where we actually sit down and try to create a beat, not a beat maker, uh, but I'll try my darndest to... Uh, uh, to make a make something to kind of show you guys how you can practically use this uh in production uh work or what have you all right so do me a favor hit that like button hit that share button hit all of those buttons the subscribe button especially uh because i got a lot of great content on this channel and a lot of great content coming so uh pr please be sure to do that uh on your way out and we'll catch you guys on the next video i'm out holla at your boy